Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the virtual home of Princeton Public Library here on Crowdcast. My name is Janie Herman, and I am the manager of adult programming at Princeton Public Library. And it's my great delight to be here tonight hosting Poets at the Library. The library has hosted uh, US One Poets for hmm, more than 15 years now in regular poetry reading sessions at the library. And several years ago, I think about four or five, we joined forces with the Delaware Valley Poets to create Poets at the Library. We have been able to have several virtual readings here on Crowdcast, which includes open mics since the pandemic began. But really, I'm looking forward to hosting some real life, in real life poetry readings, as they would say, back in the library on our second floor, where it's cozy and in person. But in the meantime, I'm so glad that we can gather and share poetry in this way. I will be introducing tonight's readers. I'm going to introduce them both at once. Uh, Colleen first and then Gail will be doing the readings. And I see we have uh, by the chat comments, lots of people on here who are happy to be here and giving shout outs to our poets and encouraging them. And I know we're going to have a great reading tonight. We will then have an open mic session with the six people who signed up in advance. And I hope you will stay around for the open mic. This is being recorded and will go up on the library's YouTube channel uh, probably by the end of the week so that you can share this out with people who may not have been able to be here tonight. So without further ado, I am going to introduce tonight's poets. First up tonight is Colleen Marks. Colleen Marks has explored many forms of art and writing. Her latest book, Twin Passions, pairs two of those explorations. She is a graduate of Rutgers University, where she greatly benefited from her study of poetry with Alicia Ostriker. Also falling in love with photography, she pursued many courses and workshops at the International Center of Photography in New York City and grew into an award-winning photographer whose work is in several corporate and many private collections. And so her latest book is a pairing of photography and poetry. Once Colleen is finished, we will bring up Gail Mitchell, Gail has her MFA in poetry from Drew University and her MA in teaching in TSOL from Westchester University. And we have my dog barking. I am so sorry about that. Um, uh, <laughs> she received her BA from Trenton State College and taught in Delaware and New Jersey public schools until she retired. Her first book of poetry was Learning English the Cultural Way. Making Makers and Keepers is her second book, which is available for purchase from on the West Windsor Arts Center website. Gail is a master quilter whose quilts have been exhibited at the University of Illinois at Chicago, the Newark Museum, New Jersey State Museum, Brookdale Community College. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to pause this because my dog's about to go crazy. Uh, one moment. Okay, sorry about that. This is the uh, joy of working from home with pets. Okay, let's go back to introducing Gail. <laughs> As I was saying, Gail is a master quilter whose quilts have been exhibited at the University of Illinois at Chicago, the Newark Museum, New Jersey State Museum, Brookdale Community College, the Paul Robeson Center at Rutgers, Newark, and more. Um, she was interviewed on Ebru TV about her quilt making. She is a native of New Jersey and considers herself a Jersey girl of color. She lives in Hamilton with her husband. And most recently, Gail has also been leading wonderful poetry discussion groups for the library as part of a grant program that we did. And we are also thrilled to have Gail here uh, because she has become quite the regular. Okay, so again, sorry about the interruption from my dog. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is bring up um, Colleen onto the screen and unmute her. Okay, welcome Colleen, we're so glad you're here tonight. I'm gonna to make myself disappear and you're gonna be in control. And we've got a nice crowd here online anxious to hear your poetry. So, and I will help you with the slide. So let's uh, take it away. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to show my screen and share it because that's the way I'm going to be reading. Okay, allow to share screen, allow. You are screen sharing, hooray. Click to close message, okay. Don't quite know what's showing up, but we'll take it from there. Uh, so Gail, you're gonna wanna 
um, Gail, Colleen, you're going to want to click over onto your active window. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to present view. Yep. Okay. Now we're good. Yeah, we're good. We can okay. see your images. Fabulous. Thank you. Uh, the idea for this book began with this street photo I took in New York City that inspired this poem. Rubbish. In this late afternoon light full of slanted shadows, you tucked asleep, cramped like that in a rolling rubbish bin, your small legs dangling like blue jean vines against its earthy orange. How does it come to this? Did your decision slip the net of home, tough loved out of reach, or have you escaped a house so strewn with abuse and neglect your tears finally left for the street. Cradled on this garbage, do you sleep peacefully away from the dilemmas of a pocket change life? Dream of a love that cannot bear your absence? Or are you listening to our footsteps as we pass by, leave you on the great bottom of this city? <clears throat> Maybe it's an Irish thing, but many of my poems tend to the narrative. This one came about when my 23 and me results came back. Heritage. All our lines start long, then uniquely rearranged. I am 86.4% Irish from the potato famine, 5.3% French German from medieval scholars. 1% Spanish from the Armada, and 0.4% Scandinavian from the Marauders. All of us, they say, from a seminal mother in Africa. I am strong from the Mullen clan of fierce warrior women. No Brooklyn brownstones, outhouses, and open mine shafts with rich magnetic iron ore deep below. I am from foot-tapping banjos, skillets, cornbread, gathering eggs and slopping hogs, summers on fire escapes, Italian ices, and pink spaldines off stoops. I am from Macy's and Coney Island, shotguns and venison, daddy's pungent pickle recipe. I know the Beatitudes, can sing Curialaison, McNamara's band, and take an old cold tater and wait. I am from Your Time Will Come, and patience is a virtue. All the pieces that need me to exist for the past to recognize itself. And since a picture is worth a thousand words, sometimes a haiku is enough. Last light, running to the beach, camera chasing last light, full of silhouettes. Atlas, lifted to heaven, Gothic spires look down upon the weight of the world. <sighs> Chicago, Gorilla. Photographers carry their camera everywhere. Look through the lens to catch brief capsules of time to freeze events before they can go down the rabbit hole of memory. But most of all, for the adventure, the possibility that one image might haunt, might rise to art. On this day, we went to the zoo, that region of faraway animals. It's what you do on vacation with a grandchild. And we wander into the land of the gorilla, his hairy, Hulk slumps against the grass, the glass of his modern windowed habitat designed by caring zookeepers. But what does a wild creature from the warm rain soaked dangers of jungles know of Chicago winters, extinction? His elbow resting on a rock, we are face to face and he looks me straight in the eye with a deep wordless stare, I see you then turns his head. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
These next three photos were fortunate to be juried into some tough shows and to win some awards. Fashion. It was a wrinkled poster plastered on a construction site wall under an eerie walkway while wandering a theater district night. Just a grab shot, my life always a circus in search of a tent, all my photos on the move, caught from the corner of the eye. A woman's backlit, faceless head, glowing yellowish gray and black, so tightly cropped, only one word was left of the message, fashion. And this is on the cover of my book. Window dressing. Remembering verbatim an unpublished poem is the most dreaded of the 10 disciplines in the World Memory Championships. Our human brain knows its recall faculties finite. Neural nets hardwired to never dwell upon the words. Just what does it all mean? And while our metaphors are hanging clever curtains, our brains are staring out the window, searching for the story. This is a down in Florida. The Society of the Four Arts. Art, music, drama, literature. Founded back in 1936, the building has this large classic entry fresco, and they don't let just anyone join. After all, this is the Palm Beaches. Membership is purposefully limited to the number of seats in the auditorium. We have all heard of a seat at the table, the room where it happens, but a seat in the auditorium gives new meaning to the A-list. Another New York street shot. Graffiti for Banksy. We are the nobodies, writers with secret names, our tags clandestine as we light our lines in the darkness, playing a rebellious fame game with our folk art of the streets. The elusive bane of authority, we fill up empty places across the demi monde have reached fine gallery walls. They check my age when I buy spray paint. This is from an early morning walk in Ocean Grove. And it's a parody of an Ada Limon poem. Off a blue sun after Ada Limon, you give into your love and lift its sunlight above the sand. You stand up from under what fixed you, harvest three crops as a truth. One for what will not die like earth away from us. One against what will not starve and famish. One for what will not fly off and confuse us. I am the flower. And this is a, another haiku because the picture is saying quite a lot. Piazza Navona, the street stilt walker readies without a backstage, has her own strange show. And now back in New York, coming and going, this narrow hanging flag glowing in the city scene, coming and going. Found art. This is on a wall. This was on a wall near the High Line, really downtown. Found art. You see it only if you want to are looking for torn edges, the black swish of a paint can, that paper lifting on the right, a curled blue-edged man 
his hand reaching out, face turned away like Adam. And then the final shot and poem. We're on vacation when my children, just tweens, decided to pose for me in an old Savannah train station. Oh, grow up. I know I must break my promise to Peter Pan, relinquish x-ray vision, flying the Millennium Falcon, leave Never Never Land where only the crocodile has a clock. But there is a plan hanging on a hook inside my vacant stairs for a few more heroic races, catches, songs, where once again, I am carelessly alive. Thank you, everyone. Wow, that was really fantastic. Thank you so much, Colleen. It really, uh, the pairings of the photos and your poetry together is was just amazing. And I think you can tell by the comments that everybody was really enjoying your reading. So I wanna thank you for being here tonight. Yes, lots of applause happening. Thank you everybody for the great feedback. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, Colleen, I'm gonna say goodbye to you for tonight and bring you off screen. And then we're gonna bring up Gail next. So uh, thank you, yeah, uh, Colleen, and close your video. And next up, we have Gail. Hang on, one and two. Okay, and here is Gail. Welcome, Gail. And Hello. you're not sharing screen, so you have your beautiful quilt up in the background. So I'm gonna just uh, disappear myself and let you take it away with your reading. All right, thank you, Janie. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to see everyone's comments and I really enjoyed uh, <clears throat> Colleen's poems and the pairings with her photos. Absolutely fabulous. Behind me is a quilt that I made. It's called New York Beauty. It has about 50 some odd squares in it. And as you can see, the crown, Lady Liberty. I'm going to be reading from my book, Makers and Keepers. I'd like to begin with my passion and my heritage, Ode to the quilt, fabric, the cottons, the seersuckers, the flannels, the woolens, the denims, the cloth, colorful hues, indigo blues, lovely lavenders, sunshine yellows, passionate purples, whimsical whites, ravishing reds, gradient greens, burnished browns, brilliant blacks, workers of the cloth, African nations of the motherland, Fon, Dogon, Akan, Yoruba, Fulani, Hausa, and the belly. Weave threads horizontally on foot looms. Change textiles into kente strips. Pattern proverbs stamp into mud cloth. If you leave, I leave. Money flies like a bird. Royal men cloak proudly upon footstools, minister their countries. Dromedaries draped in dyed diagonal strips burdened down by wary, wandering warriors. Women folk adorn themselves in colorful galas to welcome the newborn. A dinkra wrapped body set on after death. Cowrie shelled amulet bags barter and bear witness in the marketplace. Charm cloth protection, beaded coverings keep evil spirits at bay. The middle passage links Africa to America. Quilting in the winter on Marcia Jones's plantation. Need plenty kiver, and omens can cook if they get the passel of them together. Survival coverings from freezing frigid cold. Women in the loom houses, stitching, humming, praying, tacking masses quilts by the light of pine tar, hot dripping wax. A communal piecing together in oak split chairs around the frame. One woman per corner, many in between, shoulder to shoulder, a gathering in the quarters, quilts as common as cornbread, filling of husks, seeds, persimmon, and beans, feed sack batting, and bowl weevilless cotton balls stuffed every which away, 
washed almost to shreds in humongous iron pots, lye soap, stamping feet, pounding, fetching out the dirt, women glad to be together in the quilting bee, griots storytelling as they stretch the patchwork, as they stitch the patchwork pieces. Secret symbol snakes, crooked lines, needle punches, connect threadbare quilts, patchwork blocks, applique, 5440, improvisational, fractured, twisted coverings, nine patch, drunkard's path, basket weave, monkey wrench, log cabin, bear's paw, double wedding ring, shoe fly, churn dash, and rail fence, tattered, ancient, forgotten, buried, ignored in history, grandmothers, mothers, daughters, aunties, uncles, family legacies stretch from the Mississippi Delta to the Georgia Sea Islands, Gullah spoken in the sewing circles, raffia stuffed in the seams, basketfuls of scrappy squares line the seashelled walls, sharecropper women make work clothes quilts along Chalachis Creek, G's Bend, Alabama, Cultures and remembrances threaded through the fibers. Transcultural quilts hang in New Jersey. Libations to a legion of quilt makers, unearthers of the stories, healers, protectors, wooers, makers and keepers of the quilts. Cuesta Benberry, Carolyn Maslumi, Roland Freeman, Gladys Marie Fry, Michael Cummings, Faith Ringgold, Edgenetta Miller, Marie Wilson, Myra Brown Green, Sandra German, Dinga McCannon, Peggy E. Hartwell, Sandy Benjamin Hannibal, Shirley Satterfield, Raymond Hill Williams, my grandmother, Yellow Bill, Harry Powers, Harry Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Georgia Baker, Rose Miller, Maida Coles Galloway, Wanda Marie Jacondi, Rosemary Briggs, and others. I love trees in all seasons. And this is my tribute to them and also to teachers who belong to the National Sorority of Phi Delta Kappa. Swaying Sorors, seven sisters stand straight, stately, brilliant beneath the Borealis, full figured beauties, full of bounteous balm, far cry from whence they came, seedlings sown so many autumns ago, next to each other for company just beyond the field of wild flowers. Sisters, birch, ash, oak, crabapple, sour gum, ginkgo, willow. Look how proud they be there in their colors. Autumn has come kindly again to these stately sisters as they sway, survivors, each one. The next poem I'm going to read is called Clothesline Connections. Is asking a question. And there's an epigraph in the poem by a poet named William Cowper, who was born in 1731 and he died in 1800. And the epigraph reads like this I pity them greatly, but I must be mum. For how could we do without sugar and rum? In this poem, I'm going to be remembering Harry Tubman and the folklore surrounding quilts hung for slaves escaping north. Clothesline connections, like footprints disappearing in sand, looking and asking, what carried them through to freedom, to Canada? Tracks and station stops, even in New Jersey. Feet on the ground, soundlessly finding foodstuffs, blueberries, blackberries, elderberries for sniffles, corn nuts, goober peas, scuppernong for jelly, ipecac for dummies, and laudanum for babies. Even she, Harriet Tubman, refueled as a cook in a Cape May County hotel between sojourns, secreting slaves up through the Pine Barrens, Cumberland County, Crosswicks to a safe haven, the Cranberry Inn, still serving, sharing stories, clotheslines strung with so-called coated coverings, homemade quilts hidden in plain view, what carried them through to freedom, to Canada, tracks and station stops, even in New Jersey. American folklore continues. No church bells told to signal safe houses, 
no signifying mouths mentioning where to hide, not even a Negro dialect to abide by, not one single map to show the folks the way, only the station masters, no rope-a-dopes, no fooling during those long, exhausting days. Barbara Brackman's book unravels quilts and slavery. Controversy with Giles Wright's history is no longer a mystery. This one is on the lighter side. I, I know a lot of us travel and probably all of us have encountered these no seams. No seams in the night, St. Croix, 2015. The, this is a persona poem, meaning that the voices that you're going to hear are the voices of the no seams. The two-legged ones call us no seams. We see them very well. Here where we nest, hidden in the island cover, zipping and zapping away. Pairs of ten enticing toes flip-flop near our shrubs. Voices comment on the lush fauna and foliage. We sense their perfumey presence, almost bare bodies. Oh, so close. Here comes a juicy bunch, all leggy sweet as sugar cane. Let's linger as they loiter. Grasp this opportunity, posse. Attack, pinch, bite. No seams in the night. I know you know what the state fruit is. If you don't know, I'm going to read a poem about them. Blueberries. This poem recognizes blueberries and some of the black towns in South Jersey discussed in the book by professor and photographer Wendell A. Wright, White. Small towns, black lives, African-American communities in Southern New Jersey. Blueberries. He remembers picking them by the bucketful as a teenager down in South Jersey. His uncle would wake him, time to rise and shine, son. A groan and a bumpy ride out with the other pickers. A prime blueberry picking day down among around the pine barrens, sometimes coming eye to eye with a snake in among those little blue dynamos. Eight of us sat under the umbrella table at the annual, annual family cookout while he recounted his blueberry picking days as the Jersey skies opened up, showering rain all over the crumbs left from homemade blueberry eatings. <clears throat> remembering auntie's warm blueberry shortbread snatched from a Woodstown windowsill as it cooled, cousin Bernice chomping her blueberry jam smeared saltine crackers down in Whitesboro, Nana's blueberry pancakes frying atop a pot-bellied stove over in Elwood, sister's blueberry soda pop sucked through straws behind West Atco's chicken joint, Pop Pop's hand-stirred blueberry ice cream snacked on among the artifacts at the Lawn Side Museum. Mama's just mixed blueberry crumb cake, batter pan licked clean on our Bridgetone, Bridgeton kitchen. Baby girl's blueberry covered lips and fingers as her baby butt sat in the high chair there in Springtown. Granddad's frothy fruit filled smoothie overflowing with deep purple blue blueberries as the family historian taps the keys on her laptop with fingernails colored in purple blueberry gel. This is an elegy for my brother who worked for AT&T and climbed those telephone poles and kept them wired. His nickname was Killa. Killa for Alfred Levi Johnson. Knock him dead face, numbers player too full of urban dreams and a swagger that make girls swirl their skirted legs higher. Hardest working pole climber in city New Jersey. Bills burn holes in his pockets, unlike cold, useless lottery tickets. No Jerry Curl mishmash atop his handsome, headstrong crown. Instead, kick ass kinks like a Maasai warrior, fine as fine can be. Be decked in fab fly fashion with gentrified accoutrements, lockjawed with no one except himself and his posse of like thinking money whackers. 
This next poem is a golden shovel poem created by poet Terence Hayes in 2010 in his book, Lighthead, to honor poet Gwendolyn Brooks. It's a poetic form that takes a word from each line of an existing poem and uses them as the last word of each line in a new poem. I chose to use a line from Lucille Clifton's, won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life. E.L. Your visage comes into view each dusky morn. Won't let go of the ongoing company we keep. You, petite, Afrocentric wrapped, as we celebrate Drew's Ars Poetica. Hair or our natural, with our mother's birthright of tightly coiled roots. Me, magnanimously filled with awe at what and where we are in our genealogy. I embrace our cohort of wonder women who have completed our circle of diversity, shaped even more into ourselves, be we into being black like me, a Brittany, a Northerner, a New Yorker, a West Coaster, a New Englander, kind Southerner. Here we are, Esther Louise, a gathering of special Druids to celebrate your poetic life. I have three more poems up to share with you. Next one is about the Kentucky Derby. Medina Spirit won the Kentucky Derby this year. It was rode by Juan Velasquez and Burbonic was written by Kendrick Armouche. He finished 13th. He was trying to become the first black jockey to win the race in 119 years. This poem is called, Who Would Have Thought It? And it's after Edward Hotalin's book, Great Black Jockeys. He dreams of his great grandpa, griot far away across deep waters, deep waters that house the ancestors, ancestors who never crossed over, who never survived the middle passage. He hears voices in his REM sleep, Swahili, Yoruba, in the belly, Dogon, Ebo, they amplify and colorify his racing mind, mindscapes of the motherland tribes, tribes of transplanted people, rumble through his dreamscapes like the thundering hoofbeats of Aristides, thoroughbred, winner of the first Kentucky Derby, May 17th, 1875, ridden by the black jockey, Oliver Lewis, free man, his great, great uncle, crossing that blue grass line. The Martyr and the Unmasked for George Floyd, October 14, 1973, May 25, 2020. One of many, his flagrant murder creates global protests chaos and rage. His 46-year-old unmasked coronavirus face stares straight at me through the cell phone lens of a 16-year-old unknowingly recording history. A white cop's knee pressing the life force out of him. Eight minutes, 46 seconds. His 46-year-old unmasked coronavirus face stares straight at me. Me, imagining our only son, IT career, born two years before George Floyd, having a white cop's knee press a life force out of him, eight minutes, 46 seconds, handcuffed, down on the ground, anywhere street in these United States of America. Me, imagining our only son, <clears throat> IT career, born two years before George Floyd, having old school activist parents, a Wonder Woman wife, two sensational sisters, handcuffed down on the ground, anywhere street in these United States of America. Even Jesus Christ would dare not whisper in my ear, turn the other cheek. Old school activist parents, a Wonder Woman wife with two sensational sisters, call and respond, Emmett Till, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, even Jesus Christ would dare not whisper in my ear, turn the other cheek. 
martyred African Americans, lynched, shot, choked. Through the cell phone lens of 16-year-old Darnella Frazier, this flagrant murder creates global protests, chaos, and police reform as she unknowingly records American history of a white cop's knee pressing the life force out of George Floyd, eight minutes, 46 seconds. This is my last poem, Trenton. Like the question in Langston Hughes's poem, Harlem, what happens to a dream deferred? My dream came to life in an explosive and exhilarating fashion in the exhibit, If These Quilts Could Talk, hung in the City Museum of Trenton, Ellerslie, curated by two acquaintances I've known for years. Trenton, the city my father knew. Trenton, the city that lures me to Shiloh Baptist Church. Trenton, the city streets I marched along with hundreds of others for equal rights and social justice. The Tr Trenton, the city that housed a hun home for unwed mothers. Trenton, the city I visit to make donations to the senior center on that cobblestone street. Trenton, the capital city where my quilts first hung. Trenton, the city like Newark reminds me who I am. Thank you. I would like to thank, I would like to thank Janie, Janie and everyone who was responsible for getting us to, to read our poetry tonight. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gail. That, wow, that was really, really powerful. And, um, you know, when you were leading uh, for the Lift Every Voice grant, when you were leading the discussion groups, and we do have it on our, our radar, there was great interest among the attendees of doing some social justice poetry discussions. And that is something that we are looking to do towards the fall um, with Kim Dorman and I. And we, we do remember those discussions. I know that Lois Maria is on here and she was interested in helping lead that. And there's just so much truth and w things that can be expressed through poetry that cannot be expressed in any other way. And your poetry tonight was a great example. And I really love how your poems were in, and, and Colleen's, they, they fit together in unique ways, both so expressive of bringing together the visual arts with the spoken word and, um, Thank you. This was a remarkable pairing. And I, I think it was actually Lois Marie who suggested pairing the two of you together, or maybe it was Mike, but whoever suggested this pairing, you're brilliant. This was a great night of poetry. You can uh, go and read your comments and we're gonna start the open mic portion right now. And we're gonna go a little bit out of order because I currently have uh, Gwen and I'm gonna bring Gwen up while you're still here. Because my understanding is that you and Gwen, hang on Gwen, I gotta unmute you. You and Gwen um, also do quilting together, is that correct? <laughs> we, we have quilted together, yes, but I moved from New Jersey several years ago, so I want to shout out to my fellow New Jersey poets. I'm now in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, mm. but, you know, I have, like, a real fondness for New Jersey in, in my heart, so, uh, yeah. I'm so glad you could be I, here. I lived, I lived in Jersey for almost six decades. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you're getting lots of nice comments, Gail. I'm going to put you off screen. You've been on here long enough. And yes. uh, so this is the open mic portion. And I have the list of people. I'm going to start inviting people on screen. So first up is Gwen. Thank you again, Gail. And Zoop, you're going. OK, so I'm going to uh, power myself down. I'll be on here. And uh, so Gwen, take it away. OK, thank you. And I guess I should say I've done a lot more poetry with Gail than than quilting, but we were also teachers in the same profession. So we have so many connections and I'm really grateful that she invited me. Um, so I'm going to read two poems from a manuscript that I have now that's called COVID on my mind. And they reflect my own experience of having uh, survived COVID. So the first poem is Delirium. As I lay in this COVID ICU, a giant cannula in my nose makes me look like an alien from somewhere far, who knows? I've been somewhere distant, maybe I even left Earth, but now I'm back here in this bed, a lifeless mass, a dearth. Organs, brains deprived of breath, I haven't seen other humans, 
And this super high fever has my mind in ruins. Gloves, gowns, plastic masks cover bodies, but I clearly see through the window of my room that someone ordered sushi. Smoked salmon, tofu, seaweed, yum. I ordered that for me. New Mexico folks don't eat that stuff. Why leave it where I can see? Why don't they bring it to my room where the constant drip of IV and the ceaseless oxygen flow do nothing to kill hungry? I tell those covered beings, hey, please feed me now. Pretending not to understand, they tell me, write it down. But the paper they give me is made of plastic and the pen, it just won't write. Now my food has disappeared. So some lucky New Mexicans will have sushi tonight. And then the second poem is called A COVID Silver Lining. After he finished his gig, my son called from the store to see if I wanted him to bring me anything. Great, I thought. Now I won't have to go out again into the scary COVID world. I don't know any people who have caught it twice, but I sure don't want to be one of them. I tell him, hold on while I check my list. I drop the phone, check the list, then return to say what I need. He tells me some people started down the aisle where he is, but instead they moved on to the next aisle. I tell him, maybe it's because of your hair. You know, some people still freak out when they see dreadlocks. He tells me maybe, but I'm here in this aisle alone. So, and I'm so glad because I farted. I'm so glad because we're all wearing masks. Then I tell him what Henry Matisse said, there are flowers for those who want to see them. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay. So Gwen, I'm going to put you off screen. I've sent an invitation out to our next reader, um, and which is GK. And so thank you so much for joining us all the way from New Mexico. What a treat. And uh, your poems had great meter and a little bit of humor in them too, which is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, we have, I see that we have accepted and connecting from our next guest. And um, let's hope they come up in time. And if not, um, Oops, there we go. Just in time. Perfect timing. Okay, welcome to the screen, and I'm going to let you take it away with your poem. Thank you. Just a second. Let me open it. Um, I just, um, the, the Corona Chronicles the poor. On the very edge of an Indian highway, a long line of stragglers, voiceless, walks silent stoic steps, dodging the few lorries, essential services, driving at suicidal speed. Men, women, all to the starving hamlet, somewhere in the region some call the heartland. We have nothing to eat in the city. We may have nothing in our village too, but if we have to starve, it's better at home. The slippers on their feet fall apart. The blisters and boils burn. No bus, no train, no mercy. No, you stay the hell out of here. We do not want your virus. The world along their way turns them away. If it's my life or yours, I know the answer. What will happen to us? Asks the mother with a child on her back and one by her side. We will not die by the virus, says the man with her. No, we will die by starvation. He laughs till he cries and other men join in. The mirth born out of the dearth of everything, including hope. Corona Chronicles, the aged. I read the news today, oh boy. As I was passing the fragrant flower nursing home, I saw an old man emerge and sit on the porch. I paused and went up to him, but he said silently, shh, he said it gently, and then began to recite. From his mind, it looked like what sounded like a song, which turned into a dirge. He kept his eyes on me as though we knew each other. And at that moment, I became every human he knew. His world was 
ah, let him tell. He said, it's so much better than I can. No one can die someone else's death. Softly, he said, I read the news today, oh boy. Yes, that song by Beatles, my Beatles of my youth. I remembered them because like them, I read the news today. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It was not, no, not at all about the lucky man who made the grade, unless the grade he made was a positive score on the virus test. And unless the lucky man was me, there you are. I said it for the first time since I read the news. Oh boy, oh boy, oh bloody boy. For the 500th fucking time, the television ad by CCD no less says, who is most liable to get the virus? And the honors go first and foremost, drum roll please, maestro. All of you above 65, stand up and take a bow. In case you cannot bend, because your limbs cannot mend anymore, we will understand. You are the chosen ones by Lord God himself. You are anointed to be the sacrifices at the altar of, of what? That's about the news I read today, oh boy, about the lucky man who is about to die. The leaders hold the power of life and death, <coughs> blood on their hands and guilt in their souls. The descendants of that hand washer, the poster, poster child for all hand washers, Lady Macbeth. The leaders, they dilly-dally and shilly-shally. To delay is to deal death to millions. They will never be clean. Breaking news. I'm jealous of the virus, says your favorite dictator. A chorus. It's a usurper, daylight robber. Stole my thunder, tore asunder, my power and splendor. I was a dictator, owned a nation. My word was law, all else were mere blah. I rule by fiat and fear. Everyone far and near, if they held life dear, bowed and scraped, trying to retreat to the rear. It's a usurper, daylight robber, stole my thunder, tore asunder, my power and splendor. Alas, now the virus is here, here, there and everywhere. Uh, I created fear, but now fear creates me. Even my name is usurped. Corona means crown. I'm proscribed from prescribing the laundry detergent to cure the virus. The finale, half the world away, in a land richer than any that ever existed, American sons and daughters talk to their parents across ICU glass panes. I'm so sorry we can't be there with you in the ICU. I'm sorry your nurse died of the virus. Knowledge of the epidemic faces and fails the epic pandemic. Love thy neighbor at a minimum of six feet. Wear a mask so the dumb virus will not recognize you. Do not go to school. Do not go to work. Do not go to pray. Live, damn it. Do not die. Do not kill by doing any of the do nots. Corona is Latin for crown, they say. Ha, more like a cursed clown, I say. Our first grandchild began to smile today and get this. Corona rhymes with Karuna, mercy in Sanskrit. The nurse dies. No, dad, please, you aren't responsible for her death. They know the risks when they come to work. Silence. The only sound in the cemetery and the corridors of hospitals. Quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth like the gentle rain from heaven. The time for genteel, gentle rain is long past. We need a terrible torrent of mercy. Suffer the children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We are all your children. We are waiting. Where is the kingdom of heaven? Waiting. Impatient. Thank you. Wow. That was, that was really... Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm just... I feel like tonight we're having a lot of really strong sharing moments about what we've all been through this past year between the social unrest and the pandemic. And I, I guess it's coming out in our art and our poetry. So um, thank you so much, GK, for coming on to share that with us. I'm inviting Alice Stillman on screen. She is the third of our uh, open mic readers. So uh, thank you. I'm gonna say goodbye to you right now. Um, you. And hopefully we'll see you again at future poetry events here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, it says that Alice is accepted and connecting. 
And um, I know that there's also, I think, a poetry event tomorrow night with the US One Poets and the Delaware Valley Poets. So it's a big week for poetry. And uh, at the top of the chat, if you go back, I also made mention of having some other groups on our podcast. They just can hear their next guest. Okay, Alice, welcome. Hi. Um, we got some feedback going there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, I'm going to go off. Is it better? Okay. So this poem was about um, eating in a Korean restaurant. Etiquette. We like to think we know something about what we know. I lift my bowl to eat uni and rice, ceramic lip hovering below my chin, remembering how I devoured eel with rice as a child, melamine chopsticks held awkwardly between three tiny fingers. But these chopsticks, flat and metal, are unfamiliar. When I turn, no other bowls are raised. What is done in Taiwan, Vietnam, China, Japan is not done in Korea. These chopsticks have rules. Never cross to symbolize death, never to the left of the spoon, never standing in your bowl like funeral incense, wisps of smoke straggling upwards the way my grandfather's eyebrows would drift. I read how in Japan, royals put silver tips on lacquer, thinking poison turns them black, careful to rest them pointing left. Men have longer ones than women, proving how little can be measured in inches. Yet together they pick bones from cremated ashes of relatives, passing them chopsticks to chopsticks, a ritual not to be repeated during casual consumption. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, it's me that's had a problem. Okay, just say goodbye to you. Okay, not quite sure why, but I was having problems there. Um, Sunita's not live, so I'm going to invite uh, Philip on next. Um, Sunita Merriman, I'm not sure why you're not connecting, but I can't get you connected. So Philip Holmes is going to be our next poet. Um, and an invitation has gone out to Philip. And then Mike um, will be closing out. Mike Griffith, who's a member of this group. Okay, wonderful. That was a nice, easy connection. Okay, welcome, Philip. I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you. This is not a COVID poem. Recurring dreams. In these dreams, my parents are returning. Years after their ashes have been scattered. Suddenly, I wake, eyes blurred and burning. I wonder, could this darkness be turning and what in my life has really mattered? In these dreams, my parents keep returning. They point to what I may still be learning. There's much more to know, but words lie cluttered when I wake again, eyes blurred and burning. Advice is hard to take. I might be spurning ideas that would repair what was shattered in these dreams. My parents keep returning. Sometimes they quietly watch while my churning mind tries to ignore the shades which fluttered at windows as I wake, eyes blurred and burning. Through the nights, I did not find discerning words that could bring calm. Harsh voices chattered in these dreams. My parents are returning. I wake, gulp for breath, eyes unseeing, burning. Wow. wow. I'm, I'm having, having with, with my connection. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just bring that mic.
Okay, uh, this is called belief. Machines move slowly and of their own accord, glaciers slower. Mountains to the point I cannot tell. A dripping is heard not found. Without animals enviable skills, my search is fruitless. Movement is lost, time is lost. Days refract as forward approaches and approaching forward. Try a sidestep, try to move with less impulse, more planning, more reflection, but, but. The rain knows, the glacier, the mountains know. The machines forget what the animals never knew, never had to know. Machines are belief and faith. Animals refract as ever, knowing, yet faithless. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to bring you off. Okay, I think we're back with me here. And I'm sorry, look at this. I was off camera and my son baked fresh cookies and they're in my mouth. Mm. But the cookies and poetry go so well together. Um, this has been a wonderful night of, of poetry. Everybody from our featured readers to all of our open mic poets it blended together to be a wonderful, somehow connected um, in, its, in its own serendipity. So thank you very much again. As I said, tomorrow night, there will be another reading. Um, I think many of you on here already know about it, but if not, go to reach out to uh, some of the poets tonight, find out how you can join in for tomorrow night if you want some more poetry, or come back on Wednesday night to listen to some music with Gammon, who is um, the best traditional Korean wind instrument player outside of Korea. She's going to be doing a program for us for Asian American History Month, and so much more always happening. Uh, we'll be back with some more poetry probably at some point later this summer. So stay tuned for more poets at the library. Again, I'm Janie Herman. Thank you to Gail and thank you to Colleen and thank you to the US One Poets and the Delaware Valley Poets for helping range tonight's talk. And I'm going to say good night and end the broadcast, broadcast, but you can keep the chat open and send feedback to each other there for another couple of minutes. Thank you so much.